I want to play in the NFL. I want a life better than the one I've been living. Hi, I'm Demi Mafu, and this is Based on a True Story, where we break down some of TV and streaming's dopest shows that are inspired by real events. On this installment, we'll be taking a close look at CW's hit show, All American. I had a chance to sit down with Super Bowl champ and former NFL standout, Spencer Pacinger, whose story inspired the show, as well as actor Daniel Ezra, who plays Spencer on screen. We went in depth about the many reasons that make All American a true inspiration. It's great to have you both. Straight out, what does it feel like to actually have a show that's inspired by your life? Honestly, I'm still trying to like comprehend it. Uh, just every day that we're, on, that we're on set, or I'm in the writer's room, just knowing that it's a production, it's on TV, people are watching it, I can't really describe it. In terms of how the show came to be, I started writing my own scripted stuff uh, my fifth year in the league, just as a hobby. A friend took notice of that, and just through a conversation, knowing that in Los Angeles you can live 10 miles away from somebody, have a completely different perspective on Los Angeles, that's sort of the idea that you know came to be All-American, where he just asked me a question, how was it growing up in Beverly Hills? Uh, I said, no, I actually commuted every day. I'm from South Central, but you know, I would wake up at uh, 5.30 in the morning to get to Beverly Hills every morning. I was still playing at this time, and they said, once you come back from season, why don't you stop by one of other's office and sit down with us and tell us some stories. From that meeting, uh, we went to contract negotiations. What was it like when you first met Spencer? It was weird, a part of me wanted to avoid him. <laughs> but then I realized he was so open and generous and stayed that way through the whole um, filming process. It just must be such a weird, obviously you can answer that, but such a weird having your life suddenly put on screen and read out in front of people. It's, it's, it's a strange thing. I don't know how I would handle it. So um, it was all about trying to figure out, can I approach him, can I talk to him? And then very quickly I realized how sort of he was he was ready to give which was dope when i first met daniel and and even throughout the production i never wanted to say hey do this like i used to do it or walk with me and talk with me like this i gave him free range and i was there on set to help out wherever he needed me to be but for the most part i wanted him to create a compelling spencer james separate from spencer pacing because at the end of the day i can't tell him how to do his job he's an actor let's go <laughs> what are you guys doing no 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 no, no. guys guys out of the Porsche. There were some moments that I really latched onto that I thought were really interesting knowing that this is based on your life. The vintage Porsche accident. <laughs> Did that really happen? No, that didn't happen. And that's where, you know, when we first started the production of the show, uh, I gave them creative liberty because at the end of the day, you have to make a compelling show. And you know, all those things did happen in my neighborhood, it didn't necessarily happen to me. In the pilot, a Beverly Hills High student asked if you could crip walk. <laughs> was that real? Yeah, that was real. To lay it on me, crips or bloods. Excuse me? Were you really able to get your ex-girlfriend and your girlfriend at the time <laughs> 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 to help you out with a community project? No, that's, that's something else that we kind of took liberties with. How in the hell you get your current chick and your ex chick both to come out here and do manual labor for you, and I can't even hold on to one? Only on TV. Exactly. <laughs> Rob Hardy, who directed the pilot, he took me to Crenshaw, like, I think the second day I got to LA, and we went to sort of the iconic parts of the Slauson Swap meet, we went to Crenshaw High School, we went to all these places because I just wanted to feel comfortable. I didn't want it to look like I'm an outsider, even though I wasn't outsider. I didn't want to look it to feel that way at all. I wanted to feel like I was comfortable on the football field and I was comfortable in Crenshaw. It comes across. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Y'all in trouble now, boy. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. I definitely had preconceptions when it came to American football, but you've got to be smart to play that game. You've got to be intelligent, you've got to the amount of the memory that you have to have to know these routes and change it on the flight was, it was, that was one of the biggest learning curves. How do you get into Spencer mode? Like what inspires you? Music's always been a big 
part of my life. My father used to own a record shop and stuff. And so I created sort of a Spencer James playlist. So for the pilot, I only listened to LA, like LA hip hop, and partly for the accent, but also just to be in that world. It almost feels like a cheat sheet because you get to like hear all these incredible stories about LA. I take South Central where, wherever I am. And although I did have an opportunity to attend Beverly Hills High School. I'm from South Central Los Angeles. I identify as that. What the hell are you doing? I'm picking you up in your red car, in your red hat. You look like a Bloods poster boy, man. Go get your head blown off. <laughs> I'm just playing. I credit the producers a lot with wanting to show South Central and Crenshaw in a positive light. Uh, it's almost like a new world for them. And I, I definitely think, you know, we're getting our money's worth being down there. I did a little digging around. There's an Instagram post that you have. Okay. The caption reads, I'm going to do you proud, King. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you feel an added pressure for this role? Yes, I do. I do feel an added pressure. With it being a real life story, and not just the fact that it's a real life story and that the person who I'm portraying is here, but also it's such an incredible story. Often when you talk about South Central Los Angeles, everybody knows, you know, the gang violence, the drugs, you know, don't walk down the street at night, things like that. But you know, it's a rich family, you know, culture down there. You think I didn't hear about that shooting over at Crenshaw the other night? That I didn't get a call about your little fight? You've been in and out of trouble at that school for years. Having those arguments with my mom and everybody saying, no, you have to go to Beverly, I didn't like it. Being the only kid going into this whole new world from my area, it was scary. Those first couple weeks, couple months, they were rough. For the most part, when it comes to Beverly Hills, like those kids are going through the same things the kids in South Central are going through. It's just seen through a different filter. Why do you think I started using drugs in the first place? I mean, being the party girl at least gave me something, and then still you didn't notice until I almost OD'd. We think just because they have money, they have affluence, they have parents that can take care of them, they'll be fine. When the actuality is like, no, they still are going through those emotions of trying to understand who they are as a person. You can see the field, Spencer in a way few players can. Billy Baker is loosely based off of my uncle, Carter Pace Singer. At that age, he was essentially a father figure to me. We still have a very close relationship to this day. Being at Beverly and having somebody there that had my back, that you know, kind of kept me on my toes and, and taught me not to get comfortable in this environment, that's something that I wouldn't trade for the world. I understand it's been a tough week. I understand that. I don't care. Playing for Coach Baker, it was definitely hard. I remember many a times getting kicked off the field for you know, not playing the right coverage right, or not catching a, a pass right, or, or just thinking I was getting too comfortable. You can either be on this side of the line or that side of the line. You choose. One of the biggest things that he instilled in me was, although you go to this school, although, you know, you're amongst peers, you're not necessarily from here. You know, and not teaching me sort of as an outsider or anything like that, but just, you know, keeping me aware of my surroundings. I remember as a kid, I used to run home to watch Fresh Prince of Bel-Air because it was sort of the one show on TV that it felt like it was speaking to me and I felt seen when I watched the show. Even though it was, again, it was set in California, they spoke different and everything, but it was a young black man going through issues in high school. And that's exactly what I was going through at the time. There's a lot of kids who come from South Central Lake or areas like South Central Lake who message me and just talk about how they feel like finally there's a show that's talking to me or I feel like I'm finally being seen. And you know, I got the most incredible message from a high school teacher who she teaches at predominantly African American high school. And she said the show made her see her kids in a whole different light and it almost made her want to be a better teacher. When you can have that kind of effect via a TV show on someone, it's nothing else really matters. There's a scene at Sean's funeral where Chelsea, who plays Patience, was singing River by Leon Bridges. Been traveling these wide roads for so long. And when we did the final scene of that episode, which was the um, Spencer visits Sean's grave and drops flowers at his grave, that's the song I was listening to when I was sort of getting prepared for the scene. So that was sort of a weird sort of way that linked up. And also with a lot of the, the background in that scene were from South Central LA. They were really crying in that scene where we was moving through the cameras because so many of them have seen this kind of thing and seen these kind of issues and seen what happens when these things go down. They were really having emotional reactions. With the cameras, they just kept rolling and they just kept watching the, the actors and the extras and everyone was having real genuine reactions. It was one of the moments where I realized how important the show could be. Spencer, I want to know, what do you hope the show accomplishes? You know, I just hope it starts a conversation with people that don't necessarily see the world the same as you, but you know, just finding that through that conversation you can find some commonality. I know he's sitting right next to you, but 
Do you think he's proud of how you've done so far? I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I do. Absolutely. I hope so. That's all from this episode of Based on a True Story. Leave a comment below about the episode or let us know what show you'd like to see based on a true story next. Until then, make sure to keep it locked on TV Guide.